Hello, I'm coming to you once again from my office in the Rayburn House office building across the street from the Capitol. As I speak to you today on September 25th, uh, uh, many people expect uh, that the government may, may shut down again in a few days. I hope that that won't happen. I hope that uh, some sort of reasonable compromise is reached so the government can stay open. We've had uh, uh, 17 shutdowns of the federal government in the last 36 or 37 years. The longest one was 26 days uh, at the end of 1995 and early 1996. Uh, the government was shut down uh, for 17 days in 1979. Most of the other times uh, it's been shut down, the people uh, really didn't even notice because uh, uh, the essential employees uh, uh, were kept on the job and what uh, were labeled as non-essential employees were the ones uh, who were sent home. But of course, uh, most of the time when these federal employees are sent home for a few days, uh, uh, they then are brought back with no loss in pay and it's very costly to the government and I think it's not a good way to do the business of the government. So I hope that uh, the government will not have to be shut down. But I am disappointed that the, most of the people in the national media have not called on President Obama to compromise in any way. The Republicans in the House uh, have compromised and passed uh, a continuing resolution, a funding bill to fund the entire federal government until December 15th uh, and to fund all of the uh, government except for Obamacare. Uh, the reason that, uh, uh, there are several reasons why we have not uh, uh, wanted to support Obamacare or why we have opposed it. Already across this country, even though the law is not fully implemented yet, many thousands of people are not being hired because of the fear and uncertainty surrounding this legislation. Many thousands more uh, are having their hours cut back. The state of Virginia had to send out notices to 10,000 part-time workers to tell them that their hours uh, would be cut back. The superintendent of schools of Granger County told me they were having to cut their part-time employees back. All over this country, uh, uh, this uh, is happening. In addition, all over the country, most people are seeing their insurance premiums go up as insurance companies prepare for all the uh, requirements of this new law. Uh, so it's, it's already having harmful effect. Most people today are not old enough to remember that before the federal government got into medical care, uh, health care in this country was cheap and affordable by almost everybody. We were much closer to universal coverage before the federal government got into it. Uh, I remember in the mid-90s I went to a reception in Lebanon, Tennessee where I was born and the doctor who delivered me came and brought my records. I asked him, I said, how much did it cost back then for nine, uh, uh, to uh, for the uh, health care and the delivery. He said it cost uh, $60 for nine months of care and the delivery if they could afford it. I told him, I said, well, you probably didn't get anything from, uh, for delivering me then because my parents had almost no money at that time. But ever since the federal government got into it, costs have exploded so much that what has happened, the federal government has made a very small percentage of the people rich or wealthy off of government medical care, but for everybody else it's been very, very harmful so that today only Warren Buffett and Bill Gates and the super wealthy can afford uh, uh, medical care in this country while it's very burdensome and very difficult for almost everybody else. Uh, all federal medical programs, the cost is lowballed on the front end. Uh, Medicare, it was predicted, uh, would cost uh, uh, $12 billion after the first 25 years. Instead, it cost 10 times that much, and this year we'll spend $600 billion on uh, Medicare, and not to even count the expenditures on Medicaid and all the other federal medical programs. We need to be taking this country in a different direction on medical care, more toward a free enterprise, free market uh, uh, solution that would bring costs down. Instead, we're heading towards more government control. In fact, uh, uh, Howard Dean, a former Democratic presidential candidate and former chairman of the uh, National Democratic Party, said in an article in the Wall Street Journal 
that uh, uh, Obamacare, while he defended most of it, he said Obamacare would lead, uh, would have to necessarily lead to some sort of rationing of medical care. Uh, some of the leading National Labor Union people sent a letter to uh, Leader uh, Reid of the Senate and Leader Pelosi in the House and they wrote this, they said, when you and the President sought our support for the Affordable Care Act, you pledged that if we liked the health plans we have now, we could keep them. Sadly, that promise is under threat. Right now, unless you and the Obama administration enact an equitable fix, the ACA will shatter not only our hard-earned health benefits, but destroy the foundation of the 40-hour work week that is the backbone of the American middle class. That's a letter signed by James P. Hoppe, uh, the General President of International Brotherhood of Teamsters, Joseph Hansen, International President of UFCW, and uh, uh, D. Taylor, who is President of Unite Here, three of the biggest national labor unions. In addition, Warren Buffett, one of the President's strongest supporters, uh, said a few days ago that we should uh, scrap the entire bill and start over because of all the problems that it's causing uh, in this nation today. But because uh, the president is unwilling to compromise and because the national media has put absolutely no pressure on him to do so, we will not uh, uh, be able to reach that uh, point. So we're in a very difficult situation uh, here in Washington. Not only are these unions uh, being uh, uh, forced to uh, possibly give up their health plans, but uh, 16,000 Tennesseans uh, were notified that they couldn't keep Cover 10 coverage, which was a very innovative state uh, uh, plan in Tennessee that helped uh, self-employed people and small business people uh, get coverage that they couldn't otherwise afford uh, because it didn't meet all the bureaucratic requirements of Obamacare. So uh, uh, we're working up here now and we'll be in session uh, uh, on uh, the rest of this week and Saturday and Sunday and, and on into next week trying to reach uh, uh, some solution. But I hope that all of you who watch uh, this video will call on the uh, President to uh, uh, compromise and will call on the media to demand or at least request that the President uh, compromise because he's the only one who's not moving in any direction, he and his leaders in the Congress are the ones unwilling to compromise and who would be at fault, in my opinion, if the government is forced to shut down, something that uh, I don't want to see. But also, all of these promises around Obamacare, such as, number one, that you could keep your coverage if you like it. All of, these peop all of the people in the country are finding out that these promises were either very hollow or even false. And so this is a plan that the overwhelming majority of people in East Tennessee have told us that they do not favor and uh, I'm going to try to change it in a way that will bring health care costs down instead of leading to shortages, waiting periods, a declining quality of medical care that I believe Obamacare will, will lead this country to in a few years' time if we allow it to uh, go into effect. Thank you.